The Congress of South African Trade Unions, COSATU, says the proposed salary and benefits increases of 3% for political office bearers by the Independent Commission is tone deaf and embarrassing. The Trade Union Federation says the recommendations should be rejected. COSATU says it's time for political leaders to stop declaring war against taxpayers and poor people. Well, COSATU's General Secretary, Begin Jalinjali, joins me now to take that conversation forward. Why is this proposal of a 3% uh, increase for political office bearers uh, tone deaf and embarrassing, Mr. Jalinjali? I think it's for a number of reasons. As you recall, that the the cabinet, I must say, they have declared a, a, a wage freeze for the public services, for people who really do their work, for the nurses, for the teachers, for the police, people who make the state to work. They say there's no money, uh, and therefore they should accept that one. They're talking about people who are poorly paid, who cannot be able to take their kids to schools. But then they somersaulted and said, for those that are uh, bankrolled by the state, earning millions, they deserve an increase. It's a contradiction. We, we don't understand where they're coming from and how can one um, really justify this kind of hip hypocrisy that we are, we are seeing. It is in that context that we are really believing that they said anybody, everyone else, should not get increased except for themselves. But is it true to say there's been a wage freeze um, on, on public servants, broader public servants? Um, and I'm only raising this as a technical point, really, not, not a, a, a main point, uh, given that there was some adjustments and pay progression that happened last year. Of course, that had been preceded by that stalemate uh, around the previous wage agreement. But technically speaking, can we say that there's been a wage freeze uh, on public servants indeed. Uh, in general. Yeah, indeed. In the, indeed, there has been. The question of uh, when the inflation is about uh, last year, let's say it was about 4%, and you give only 1.8%, it, it does not, re I mean, even uh, what you retain the power of your, of your wages. In other words, it means you are getting less in terms of the value, in terms of those things. And if you take into account other cost, the real issues that will be minus in terms of what you were earning the previous year. And therefore you can't uh, say anything that there was a wage adjustment in that in that context. Sure. But there were no pro I mean wage progression also you remember they were trying to give people cash and uh, not so that it does not uh, increase your, your package as the whole. So the issue that they went to court and nullify uh, an agreement that sure. was signed in a broad light clearly indicated that you can then justify that there are some people that uh, deserve a wage increase when you have said publicly, I mean, the, 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 the Minister of Finance have publicly said they wanted to impose a wage freeze for three years. Yeah, no, I, I just needed to get that out of the way just for the sake of anyone who would have been saying, but last year there was something that was announced, so I'm glad that we've dealt with that. Those considerations about inflation and its impact on the earnings of people, do they not apply to uh, the uh, political office bearers, given that, um, you know, in 2020, a, a number of them, not all of them, um, had, had voluntarily said they would take a 33% a, a uh, pay, um, you know, uh, uh, drop uh, to contribute to the Solidarity Fund at the start of the COVID-19 situation in our country. And last year, in 2021, uh, the recommendation from the Independent Commission was that there should be no increases in as far as public office bearers are concerned. So do those considerations about uh, inflation and the erosion of the buying power of money not apply to them? Look, the, the, the point that we, we, we needed to emphasize is that everyone deserves a wage increase or at least an inflation-related increase to maintain your buying power. But you can't, on one hand, being in that position and say for others, the principle should not apply. It can only apply to yourself. That's why we're talking about the hypocrisy. If they can take a decision 
for example, in the cabinet level and say the public sector deserves zero or they deserve nothing, that should be extended to themselves. They can say you can't get wages for you, but for us is something else. The double standard that we are raising, mm. that they, it is the same people who went to, to court and says, nullify that wage agreement, which they entered into in a, I mean, broad daylight. So we're, we're raising the hypocrisy. We should not be understood that we said there should be no increase for anybody to, I mean, just said, infl- I mean, increase mm. for maintaining your buying power. But we are questioning the hypocrisy in here that it's supposed to be them in the first instances. I think this is more now than when it was in the past to say, look, we've got 50% unemployed. We can't uh, deliver services. We need nurses that we can employ and police and teachers. Yeah. Those people are working hard. They deserve the cost of living is very hard for those poor. By the way, how much are these people earning that we are referring to? Others are earning millions. And it will take a mess almost nine years salary just to get to the level of the judge or level of a, a DG. It cannot be explained. You can't justify it. It's an elite increase, by the way. What about, uh, so uh, these, these, these are recommendations from the Independent Commission on the remuneration of, public of, of political office bearers. Um, and now yes. we'll have to await the decision of the president whether to endorse or not endorse these increases. Um, so what is your advice then? What is your call to the president? Should he reject this recommendation of this independent commission? And also while, while you're answering that, what about those categories uh, within the people who are covered by this independent commission and its recommendations? Uh, people such as magistrates and, and people such as judges who have been saying that, in, 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 in essence, their earnings have actually dropped uh, over the last five or so years, with the result that, you know, the judges, for example, uh, have raised the, example, uh, the, the, the issue that, in terms of the Constitution, judges' remunerations should not drop. Uh, it should not be reduced. But actually, this has happened, and magist- magistrates also have similar complaints about, you know, that basically their earnings have been frozen in a way. So in, in a roundabout way, I'm asking you, what should President Cyril Ramaphosa do? Should he take a, a, a blanket approach that says, I reject this 3% across the board? And if he does that, what about these other categories uh, of workers who have, you know, it seems, special circumstances? I think to make the, the, the job easier for the, for the president, our appeal would be, for those that are, are being uh, uh, going to be recovered by the recommendation to st- stand up and say, President, we want to make your job easy. We're in a very difficult situation as a country. The cost of living is this. 50% of our people are unemployed. Number of people goes to bed without uh, uh, anything on, on, on the table. That for them, while the standard might be looking dropping, but at least they're in a comfortable position. Most of them, they they got perks that nobody else is enjoying. And compare their work with a teacher, with the nurses, I assume, I will argue that their work is less in terms of being, uh, being very, very high in that way. So the appeal to us is that they themselves have a voice. They can say to the president, president, we don't deserve the question of 3%. If they were going to make any kind of an appeal to the president or recommendation, I think we'll look positively to that one. But second, we're appealing to the president and say, President, we are talking about the social compact. Many people have to make some compromises, and the compromises must start from the top so that the money that is supposed to be given to the what we regard it to be the better off is given to the those that are really suffering. Uh, in this in these instances we support the question of maintaining normally in ordinary situation maintaining your buying power uh, but we, we we said it is not this time to be discussing those issues we have raised in the past 
the discussion about the executive salaries and those that are, in our view, are earning high, too high. The other people are earning even higher than the president. Mm. That wage structures, in our view, need a societal debate so that at least yeah. we can be together All in right, discussing Mr. this matter. Mr. Njalinjali, I've got to thank you for your time. And by the way, and very briefly, I take it that even from your side, you've voluntarily imposed a uh, salary increase freeze on Begin Jalinjali, the General Secretary of Kosatu. It's not happening, is it? The, 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 the salary of uh, Begin Jalinjali is determined. I mean, if you are compared with anything, that's why people refuse to be General Secretaries. Uh, Mr. Jalinjali, I don't know what happened there. I think it froze. Yeah, I, I, I think the question you are, you are imposing is unfair question but the point i'm making i mean there's the sympathy with the, the the instrument they are sympathizing with us is that uh, many people will refuse to pay general secretary of Kosato because of the wage back i see all right no i've got to thank you for that and i think i was asking it in the context of the social compact uh, that you raise as in it's time for everyone to sort of make sacrifices but i take the point that you are making uh, about the position of general secretary and the remuneration uh, that goes with it that is begin challenge he is kosatu's general secretary weighing in there on the recommendations of a three percent increase uh, for political office bearers uh, that has been uh, put forward by the commission uh, that looks into their remuneration.